Hello, good morning, and welcome to Travel Chat. This is a show where I use my ridiculously long commute to chat about things that are going on in my life. Um, Specifically, I talk about the um, epiphanies that I have over the previous 24 hours because 2019 has been the best, hands down, the best year of my life. I have gained so much momentum in just in my thought life, in my sanity, in my satisfaction with life. It's been amazing. If this is your first time watching, please forgive me for not looking at the camera. Obviously, I have to look at the road. Do not worry about me. I am wearing my seatbelt and my um, commute is one hour, one way against traffic, a very straight line on a country highway. It's boring, which ended up um, being extremely meditative and allowed me to like think a lot on my way to and from work. And so I ended up like really having these like deep ideas and then I just turned the camera on them one day. So that is why um, I come on every morning about 7.45 after I drop my kids off at school uh, and I come on and I talk. So here is the new thing about Travel Chat right now. Travel Chat is now going to be shorter because as I was uploading these videos, they were all approaching 30 minutes, sometimes a little longer. And I was like, this is crazy. I mean, my commute is long. It's an hour one way, but I don't need to blah, blah, blah the whole time. Right. So I decided that I was going to keep travel chat to 15 minutes. That's it. 15 minutes and try to get it all in, get to the point, stop telling these stories that go all over the place. Um, so that's a new thing about today's travel chat moving forward. Also, a new thing I wanted to do is segment the show. Now, normally what I do is every day, right before I press go live, I let my intuition decide what I'm talking about. So it's usually some big idea that I've had in the last 24 hours, which is amazing because every 24 hours I have this huge idea. Um, But now I want to do something called Magic Money Mondays. And on Magic Money Mondays, I want to talk finance because um, I'm trying to marry the two parts of my personality right now (laughs) and my business. So I have this planner company, Bold World Planners, and that is my official business. And I make planners like I realize that I'm gifted in making planners. I love to do it. It makes me so happy when I do it. And they come out kind of nice and helpful. And my planners are focused around finance. So I am kind of letting my finance pages, meaning my Instagram page, my Facebook page for Bold World Planners, I'm letting them go dormant because it was just too stressful to manage two pages plus my personal page. So I'm letting them go dormant. So now I'm trying to marry in Fran in real life with Bold World Planners. So which makes sense because I'm one person and I manage the two entities. But Fran in Real Life is focused on intuition and using law of attraction in my daily life and my midlife crisis and motherhood and my crazy schedule and how to be a better person in general. And so the only way that I can squeeze finance into this is by taking a day of the week and answering questions about money and issues around personal finance and um, so if you have any questions feel free to send me questions in the comments and I'll answer them for you Um, also I'm taking these questions from my Facebook group Um, what was the other thing I was gonna say about that oh yeah so because I decided to do magic money Monday it does not mean that my intuition is not still tugging at me and knocking on the door of my heart to tell you things so I actually do have something that my intuition has told me uh, to speak about today and I'm gonna talk about that tomorrow and uh, stay tuned for that because it's kind of it's a subject that I have been um, kind of alluding to and putting off for a long time and I've been saying you know I'm gonna tell you about religion and law of attraction in a little bit and I always say that like I need to do a whole series on religion and law of attraction 
So I am planning to talk about religion and law of attraction tomorrow because I've had a lot of epiphanies about it um, just in the last 24 hours. Uh, so anyway, because the time is running and this is exactly what I do, this is why the show is always 30 minutes long. Um, I want to talk about cash. So cash, and there's so much I can talk about with cash and I will spread it out over the Mondays for you. But one question that came up in, uh, one of my Facebook groups is, should I use an online money market high yield savings account for my cash for my fully funded emergency fund or for my baby emergency fund which is Dave Ramsey's baby step one or should I use a regular savings account because this particular lady said my husband believes that online banks are a scam so this is my question, this is my answer for you, and that was a really good question. This is my answer. Online banks and money market accounts, high yield savings accounts are not a scam. They are tools from heaven above. This is such a, a little known, well-kept secret um, that now is finally becoming mainstream and people are talking about them more. When I first got, I first got a money market account, online bank money market account, probably in, gosh, it was probably 2005, something like that. It was ages ago. I didn't even know what the thing was. Like, seriously, I did not know what it was. I opened this account. Um, back then, it was called ING, or it was called the Orange account, if you guys remember that. Now, um, they were bought by Capital One, and it's called the Capital One 360 Savers Money Market Account. Um, but what it does is it pairs, whoops, it pairs your um, checking account with this online money market account, and um, you can automatically have money transferred however often you want every pay period or once a month you can have money transferred into this money market account now the money market account and oh and the benefit is that you can get your money transferred back into your account whenever you need it but the best part about this is the money market account has super duper awesome interest rates so you can get two percent or sometimes more on of a return on your money <clears throat> if you have over ten thousand dollars in this account that interest rate is really high that's when you get the two percent or more if you have less than ten thousand dollars you still get a really good interest rate especially considering that your bank's interest rate is like point zero so it's like a fraction of a percent and i typically will get like a penny a month on my bank savings account because i don't leave a lot of cash you know stashed in there anyway because of it's not getting, getting me that great rate of return. I'll put it in this money market account and this sucker just grows and grows and grows. The other good thing about it that's amazing, if you can do this, um, which I'm a spender, so it's amazing that I can do this. If I can do this, anybody can do this. When you transfer that money automatically, for one thing, you don't miss it. You transfer it automatically every time you get paid. You put it into this money market account. It's out of sight, out of mind. It's growing behind the scenes. Nothing alerts you and says, hey, you have $5,000 saved up. Hey, you have $550 saved up. Nothing alerts you. So nine times out of 10, you forget that you have it. If you transfer just a little bit of money every pay period, you don't miss that money and it just grows and grows and grows. It's compound interest, y'all. And this segment is called Magic Money Monday. And let me tell you, compound interest is magic. Magic from heaven above. It is magic. It just grows and grows and grows and grows till the next thing you know, you go, oh, wait a minute, I've got this money. Let me see how much it is. And it's like, holy smokes. So I'll tell you a quick story about what happened with me when I first realized that this account was a big deal. I, like I said, I opened the account probably in 2005. I can't even remember when. 
and I was putting like $50 a month in it or something. I can't even remember. It was just a small amount because I was a resident at the time. I was doing residency. I was transferring some money in this account. I had opened it up. And like I said, it's an online bank. So that one makes some people uncomfortable because you can't just walk into the branch. Um, maybe Capital One. I don't think they have branch. I think they have some branches, but it's not like you can just walk into a branch or go to an ATM machine. Like you don't get a debit card off of it. Some of them will give you checks. Some will have a debit card. Um, but, and I would encourage you if you want to look for one, Google high yield money market online accounts or something there like that. And you'll get a list of them and it compare their interest rates. Back in the day when I opened mine, there weren't a lot of options for it. At least I hadn't heard of any options for it except for this one. And I think people were nervous about it. But then finally, when it became like a real big thing, then other banks started to open up and other banks started to do it too. So Google that, find one. My advice would be to find one with a name that you recognize. Either you've heard somebody else talking about it, you've seen a commercial for it, or you've heard about it some kind of way that it's not just some random bank that you've never even heard of. Like Capital One 360, I can vouch for that because I've used it forever. Um, Ally Bank is another one. And there's some other ones too. Sally Mae Bank has one. We have an account with Sally Mae also. Actually, three accounts. So these are secrets of the rich, okay? I'll tell you my story about what happened and I'll tell you why it's a secret of the rich and how you can structure this into your entire personal financial plan. So I opened this account when I was first out of medical school. I was a resident and I totally forgot about it. I had it on auto draft. So every pay period or every month it was taken um, part of my payment, I mean payment, part of my paycheck. And you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, it may have been those financial planners who told me to open this account because I got some financial planners. I was a busy resident. We were on call all the time. I was sleep deprived. I did not know how to manage money. So it may have been them who actually told me to set it up. Um, but, cause I wouldn't have thought of that on my own. But um, I set it up, set it and forget it, okay? Set it and forget it. I had no checks associated with it. I had no um, debit card associated with it. I could transfer my money back and forth between the two accounts as needed, but I generally didn't do that. I just forgot about the whole thing. So um, fast forward to, this would have been 2011, 2011 or 2012. I was sitting on the couch, chilling, got a phone call on my cell phone. This lady called and said that she was calling from Capital One. Actually, was it even Capital One? No, it wasn't. It was still ING. She was calling from ING and said that I had this bank account that had been dormant for several years, no activity on it. Um, and she was wondering if I wanted to keep it or if I wanted to close it and have her send me a check for the balance that's in the account and just shut down the account. And I'm sitting here, you know, I'm just like, well, I don't know, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Like I have this account that it had like $500 and a thousand dollars, whatever. I was gonna tell her to close it. So I said, well, how much is in the account? She said $12,000 and some change. 12, hi Diane. $12,000 in this account. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what? Right? I just started laughing hysterically. I just started laughing hysterically. Like I couldn't even wrap my brain around the fact that there was this money just automatically going out, growing, growing, growing behind the scenes. I totally forgot about it. And now it had amassed $12,000 after compounding all these years without me touching it. Like that should have been my first clue that I could actually like be financially independent but that wasn't a fad back then and I was a spender so I'll fast forward to the end of the story when I spent all that money probably at Walmart and Hobby Lobby because I was just I wasn't a saver right I was a spender um, and so now I'm changing that money legacy for myself I'm changing it I'm, and I should stop saying that I am a spender but I know that deep down by nature I am it's it's compulsory for me 
But I think if I start to say, and this is where law of attraction comes in, if I start to say that I am a saver, it's safe for me to have extra money, I am a saver, and I'm not a spender, then I will actually attract that personality to my life because my personality has to change if anything is going to change. So anyway, I asked, I told the lady, I said, oh no, we're not canceling this account because any account that can do that is some, that's a keeper on my team. That's a keeper. So I've kept it all that time. So I've had that account, I guess it's been, I guess over 10 years now. Yeah. It had to be like 12 years now. Yeah. 12 to 15 years. So, um, but it's actually, it's, it's not empty anymore because now we're in baby step three, but it was empty because we drained all the money out in order to pay off our debt. Um, we'll talk about that on another Magic Money Monday, but yeah, we liquidated everything to pay off debt um, because that's baby step two and that, that's super important. So now I'm building it back up. We're building our fully funded emergency fund, which by Dave Ramsey's baby steps says baby step three, and that's where you save three to six months of your living expenses and you save it in cash. The reason you save it in cash is because this is the money that's going to help you if something goes wrong. So your emergency fund is basically to keep you from having to panic or do something drastic like cash in stocks, cash out CDs early, cash in your bonds, sell your car. You know, if something horrible happens, like say you sorry, somebody's texting me, say you lose your job. If you lose your job and you're living paycheck to paycheck, you are going to have a really, really rude awakening because that first month without your check is going to be a disaster. It's going to be a complete and total emergency, obviously. So your ba your number one, baby step number one emergency fund is to save 500 to to $1,000. And that is so that while you're working on paying down debt, if anything crazy happens, like your car breaks down or you blow, I blew five tires in one month and I only have a vehicle with four wheels. Like that's how bad it was when I first started my um, debt payoff plan. So when something like that happens, you don't want to be stuck taking money away from paying your bills or paying down debt because you had this emergency. So that's why Dave Ramsey, who is brilliant, and the baby steps are absolutely brilliant. The first step is to save an emergency fund, a little emergency fund. Then when you pay off all your debt, all your paycheck comes directly to you, you build a bigger emergency fund, and that's gonna sustain you for the next baby steps that are gonna happen, which are awesome. So we're right now in baby step three, we're, we're building up our bigger emergency fund. Um, which is uh, gonna be three to six months living expenses. I wanna expand it to 12 months of living expenses because I wanna have a, that huge nest egg, that huge cushion, so I can build my business without any fear of like, you know, having some major disaster or not being able to take a course that I wanna take or not being able to buy software that I wanna buy or not being able to go to the Bahamas with Lisa Nichols when she asked me to, right? Like I wanna have the money to, to say like, okay, even though, you know, I still have this cushion that I can draw from. So that is that. Um, so what is the deal about cash? Okay, here's the thing. So cash is a controversial subject for me because I used to be a spender. See how I did that? Now I'm a saver. But what made me uncomfortable was the idea of having cash just sitting there because your money should have a job. Money wants a job, right? Money wants to either be assigned to a bill, assigned to something of meaning, like giving, charity, something like that, or assigned to the army that grows like it's the army that grows money is your army and it, its job is to like grow and grow and grow it's going to be like your little arm your little money baby that produces more little money babies and those babies produce more little money babies like that's the role of money in life is to grow and grow and grow unless it's being traded for something you need like a home a roof over your head you know a car food then it can be traded happily if it's thrown away or blown on stupid stuff then it feels disrespected and it stops coming to you all right 
<clears throat> so, and I'm gone over my 15 minutes, right? This is how it happens. So this is my last point on this. So money needs a job. And so what makes me uncomfortable is money that's sitting there, like sitting in my bank savings account, making bull crap interest. That is not a respectful job for money. That's like hiring a lawyer to staple papers in a conference room all day, right? Like your money is like, are you serious? Like this is what you have me for? Like I am so much better than this. I'm not just going to sit here, right, in the savings account and make bull crap interest, right? I need to multiply and grow. I need to feel free to multiply and grow. So the way you scratch that itch is to put your money in this money market high yield savings account where it can grow as strongly as possible the interest while it waits for you to give it another job so you put your money in a money market account and you let it grow you keep depositing of course you keep transferring money every pay period and you let this thing compound and grow until you have enough money to buy a house till you have enough money to buy a car till you have enough money to have your fully funded emergency fund this is what it's for, right? You're not just sitting your money somewhere like the parable in the Bible where the guy just buried the coin, you know, the master gave, you know, three of the servants the coins and the one guy just buried it in the ground to keep it safe. He's like, oh, I just buried it here. You know, you gave me one and now you've come home and here's one back or whatever it was. And it's like, no, no, no. I didn't just give you one so you can just bury it in the ground and give me one back. I want you to invest it and make it bigger. So that's what these money market accounts are. It's the cash that you may need really fast, but it's invested and it's growing bigger and bigger until you need it. So it's like free money on top of what you already got. The other thing is that it's safe, right? It's, they're FDIC insured. And really when you look up an account, you should make sure it's FDIC insured. Like always, anyway, you make sure that any bank that you're gonna do business with is FDIC insured. So it's backed up, so there's some insurance. So your money is safe, and if something happens, it's not like, oh, sorry, we lost all your money. No, you can get your money back from that um, federal um, promise. So that is the thing about money market accounts. So um, in case you're just joining, I want to remind you that my new segment on Travel Chat is Magic Money Mondays, where every Monday I totally ignore my intuition who's telling me to talk about religion right now, religion and the law of attraction right now. Instead, I'm talking about personal finance, and every Monday I will talk about personal finance and any questions that people have because... I want to make personal finance not personal anymore because if someone had, which people were probably trying to educate me and I wasn't listening, but if they had made it in such an engaging way like I am, hello, then I maybe I would have listened. I probably still wouldn't have listened. Um, but I'm going to keep my travel chats short. I'm going to keep them hopefully to 15 minutes. As you can see, this is like 20 minutes already um, or 20 25 minutes already so it's supposed to be less than 30 minutes and it's already 25 minutes um to keep them shorter and if you have any questions leave them in the comments if you have any comments about money market account experience leave it in a comment too and we will discuss these things we got to talk about money because a lot of people weird okay more text messages from work people are not coming to work today for some reason is it a it's a it's a waning crescent moon right now i don't know what's going on i guess i'm gonna be the only one there anyway if you have any questions um let me know in the comments all of these videos from travel chat are uploaded to youtube on my youtube channel friend in real life um and i would love it if you would share them like them share them from youtube because that's what counts like and comment subscribe hit the little bell so you can get notifications this is why i'm making them shorter because they are too freaking long for anybody to even like enjoy so i'm gonna start making them short and sweet and try to get to the point <laughs> every day um and i will talk to you later bye